Welcome, everybody, to the Online Prosperity Show with Prosper. I'm Lane Ballone, and today we're going to talk about uh, experimentation, how principles can guide you in life, and how to have a fulfilled life. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got none other than Lane. Lane, how are you going, my man? I'm doing great. How about you? Fantastic, brother. Thank you so much for jumping out of the waters. I know you're in Panama. You're supposed to be relaxing and enjoying <laughs> your newly found laptop lifestyle. Now, guys, if you're just tuning in, Lane has traveled 33 countries, has visited the Arctic, He's climbed mountains and he's sitting here and he's about to throw us a lot of value about how to have a life that's purpose, purposeful. See, I can't even talk right now. Purposeful <laughs> and enjoyable. Now, Lane, thank you so much for taking your time today. Tell us a little bit about oh, you. Thank you for having me. Great stuff. Tell us a little bit about your journey so far. So uh, I grew up, I didn't have the, the best way of growing up. Uh, I grew up without a father. My mother, she was strong, she was uh, gritty, and she uh, disciplined uh, a sense of re resourcefulness. And uh, so from then on, you know, I took those core values and, and uh, became successful. Um, I joined the military, and that's where I kind of found, my, found myself. Uh, I began to travel, and just a few years ago, I started, you know, wanting to help give back because there have been so many people been able to help me along my path and I wanted to be that other person that was helping others so uh, that brings me here today and I'm uh, living in Panama and trying to explore the country and just uh, help as many people as I can well thank you so much and for starters we would want to thank you for your service sir obviously not a lot of people would have had the courage to do what you did no you having had um, that's not so fortunate uh, background. It obviously gives you something, um, you know, to fight for and want to give back for if people have helped you. How has that now shaped the person you are today? And how is that going to shape the future, um, you know, you that you are about to tell us and create at the moment? So for me, it's, it's all about um, kind of almost like karma. You know, what, what, what you sow is what you reap. And being able to receive just, you know, prosperity and receiving just help and inspiration from all these different people. Um, and, it, and it wasn't like it was just like, you know, all in like super uh, like mentor, mentorship type of activities. It was just like every day people leading me and, and guiding me in the right direction. And, and so that inspired me to be the same. So everything that I do, every, you know, whether it's uh, stuff that I share online, interviews like this, it's all about, you know, if I can reach one person, if I can have a, implant an idea that, that starts them on their path to get to where they want in life and reach their potential, uh, that's what I want to do. Or if, if it's um, sharing a message that's very, you know, impactful and meaningful, you know, whatever is spectrum people on, on their journey, you know, I want to help them wherever they're at and to get them where they want to go. Great stuff. And I think you're doing an amazing job. That's the reason why we're talking here today. So you haven't been in the army and also traveling those 33 countries. Has that taught you anything about the human race? Oh, absolutely. And that's what inspires me to help others to travel and experience new things. The, uh, the way that, um, travel opens your mind and opens your perspective. It, you know, you, there's, there's no way to, to describe it. You have to experience it yourself because I believe that all around the world, all around the U S all around in other co uh, countries there, everybody lives in this, their little bubble and they are comfortable in it. They uh, interact with people that think like them. They, they look at the, the values that, that everybody has in that bubble. And they think that that's, uh, the, the proper way, the right way. But when you travel, you notice that there's a whole bunch of different bubbles and different perspectives and different ways of thinking, different cultures that 
it's it's not just that there's no one size fits all there's no one correct answer and and i think it allows you to uh, have have a sense of um less divisiveness you know because there's a lot of people you know especially nowadays like a lot of people judging other people for their beliefs um thinking that their way is the right and if they if they don't think that way they're they're wrong you know so and having the exposure of seeing other places and, and experiencing new cultures um, just gives you a, a more well-rounded perspective on the human race, life, and, and how, to, how to enjoy it the most. Great stuff. Obviously, I mean, with different cultures and different languages, um, the fact that one person can understand what you're saying, but they've lived all their lives should tell you something you know, of the potential that life has, which is what you are sort of teaching people. And in the places that you've been to, have you managed to sort of grasp the language or how have you survived in the 33 countries there? Uh, Most of the times that I've traveled, uh, they've only been from anywhere from three three days to maybe two weeks. Other places I've lived in foreign countries, uh, Germany for almost five years, um, I would be, um, for work, I would be in other countries for, you know, extended periods of time, anywhere from one to three months. Um, you basically, you, you, uh, develop a, a list of terms and, and things that you need to learn for, for the specific language, you know, basic phrases, and then, um, just kind of asking around you using, you know, you're being resourceful and using the, your situational awareness to, figure out what you need to say and communicate because, you know, we all know that, that words are only a small por- portion of communication. You know, you have body language and then also like, you know, what you think and how you think, you know, gives off a, a cer- certain vibe that, that people around you will, will feel and sense. And if you're coming from a, a, a genuine perspective and in, in a genuine uh, way, then people are going to sense that and then they're going to be more open to, to feel what you're trying to communicate. So language is important, but uh, I think the most important when dealing with communication is uh, just being a genuine, authentic person and being curious about where you're at and the people that you're talking to. Um, So yeah, it's, yeah, a lot lot of things go into it, but yeah, I'll say that would be the. Okay, great stuff. So you've climbed mountains, okay? That's obviously above sea level. You've been in the army. That's exceeding human potential. Now, what is it that you have learned that you are now imparting onto people, uh, especially about human potential, um, you know, that, that you have learned? What can people learn from you? I think that um, what a lot of people can take is uh, having a sense of uh, principles that you live your life by. Because... There's so many different paths. There's so many different techniques that, that people will, will talk about, especially on the internet, um, things that there's, there's, there's no certain way of going. So if you follow these certain uh, uh, principles, they, they'll guide you uh, during the forks in the road that happen in your life. And um, I think that you have to, it's, it's a lot of thought that has to go into it, a lot of depth. And, uh, you got to question, you know, what you believe. You have to question why you believe it because whenever we're growing up, we're exposed to different beliefs and it's, it becomes ingrained in us to, to think in a certain way and believe in a certain way. And, you know, like we said earlier, the, the aspect of traveling steps you outside of that and you're able to see it from a different perspective. And uh, what I always tell people is uh, challenge your beliefs, you know, there's, there's a lot of beliefs that you're going to hold core, like hold to, to you for the rest of your life. And that's a good thing that it'll be the stable stabilization that you need. But there's certain things that you can change, you know, slightly that will, it will put you on a path to prosperity, success, and ultimately, you know, giving back. And so following a set of, of principles that you live your life by uh, and experimentation. So whenever you know, you have an idea that you want to try something that's um, just you have this itch, you know, you just got to go out and try and experiment with it. You know, similar to a scientist, 
you got to do some research, create a hypothesis, and then you've got to conduct your experiment. And then on the, af- you know, on the afterwards, you know, you got to do a little bit of reflection, see what works, see what didn't, and, and, and continue your path. And then uh, I'd say the third thing is, um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. Sorry, we have, uh, oh, yeah, so, uh, and then figure out if you can master yourself, you know, and, and I think that's really important in order for you to um, get, what, get what you want in life. You have to master yourself. And I would say those three things are, are uh, that laid the foundation for getting, getting to the potential that you want in life. And everybody's, everybody's freedom is different. Everybody's potential is, is different, you know, and, and you have to decide if that's what you want and just, just kind of go for it. Great stuff. Okay. So you did mention three things right here. Experimentation, uh, principles, and also mastering yourself. Now, the people that are watching right now might be very overwhelmed with this because obviously you and me have traveled. You and me know that, um, you know, Thomas Edison, when he created his light bulb, it was the 1000th attempt and he didn't say he failed. But what did he say? He said that he had um, 1,000, he now knows 1,000 ways that do not work, right? Now, you mentioned yep. experimentation, and that is exact, um, you know, experimentation. Would you give, um, you know, a few examples of, you know, day-to-day life that if you are maybe walking a certain path to go to work, maybe changing the bus route so that you walk the other direction, that's also experimenting. And what sort of examples of day-to-day um, you know, activities that people can experiment with so they can break the pattern because what breaks, what, what, what happens to a lot of people is they now get into a routine. So if you break the pattern, at least it, it shapes a few things. And I think that's what you're coming across there um, as, you know, talking about experimentation. So do you have any sort of daily things that people can just knock out so they can, you know, see and achieve and get instant results of their experimentation work? Yeah, I would say um, start small. And whatever experiment that you're going to start, start small. So you start with the, with the morning, start up, start getting up, experiment with uh, getting up, you know, 10, 15 minutes early and maybe reading some kind of book that you're interested in with something that you want to learn. Uh, experiment with uh, meditation uh, there's, there's, or mindfulness. Whatever, you know, there's a lot of terms that you could use for that. But just thinking about, um, you know, get into a quiet place for five minutes to, you know, just watch your thoughts go by or focus on, you know, something that, that you really want or focusing just on, uh, you know, reflection of, of self. And um, so, you know, you can try that. Um, just even stretching out for, for five minutes, experiment with that um, to you know, loosen up the body, get the blood pumping and, you know, first thing in the morning. So that way, you know, you're primed for, for learning, you're primed for, uh, just opening, opening up, you know, to, to whatever comes to you, you know, uh, experiment with, uh, walking. You know, I, I, I think that, um, depending on where you're watching this from, like you may not walk a lot and, uh, walking has many different, you know, many different benefits. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of studies talking about at, in older age, you know, as, as people get older, the, you know, when they walk on a consistent basis, you know, they, 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 they live longer, they're happier. And uh, I have a, a great, great aunt that I just met a couple months ago. She's, she just turned 93 and she still teaches preschool at 93, you know, and she walks from her house to the school. And, uh, and there's also, you know, just one more added benefit for, for experiment with walking is that, you know, that you can, you know, I walk to think. So walking is this thing where it's just enough uh, that you, that your brain has to use to, to focus on walking, but it's, it's enough to where it can almost, you can, it does it on, you know, standby. And so you can think about, you know, there's a certain flow of thoughts and, and, and things that, that happen while you're walking. So. Experiment with, with small things, you know, experiment um, and whatever, just whatever interests you 
and just kind of just test it, you know, and, and start very small and then build it from there. Great stuff. You did mention something about walking and especially about your great, great um, aunt. God bless her. Um, yeah. So I just figured, you know, most of the people that are probably watching are going to be city folk or they taking the bus to work or to, you know, to whatever their office is, maybe try and, um, you know, jump off the bus one stop earlier, you know, so that you can walk the rest of the way. And that could just shift the way you're doing things. Um, you could meet different people on the way and you could discover things that are actually around your work area that you didn't know exist. You could also uh, maybe find out that there's other businesses you can prospect on on the way or oh, whichever way it works out. And I also thought, um, when I, yeah, when I was growing up, um, we we um, we we used to 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 learn how to walk like a lion. Okay, it's called the lion walk. So when a lion is about to hunt. It doesn't step on its, um, you know, on its, um, on its toes. It actually steps on the heel first. And then, so it's a heel to toe type of walk. It actually makes you present because that's a different type of pattern. When we're walking, we just step flat on. But if you step heel to toe or if you step toe to heel, right? It, it gives you that mindful and state that you are present and you know what exactly you're doing and you're in control of every movement in your body. So you could try that too. Thank you so much for that. I mean, sorry, you just got me back there thinking. You know, <laughs> earlier on, Len, if I would just want to digress a little bit, you also mentioned, obviously, um, now we've talked experimentation, you mentioned principles and then you mentioned mastering. Now, do you have a few principles that we can just play around with that would give instant um, you know, gratification to the person that's watching this? Because all we want is them to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable or a life that's worth remembering. What sort of principles would you sort of want to impart on people today? Yeah, I would, uh, two, two principles, I would say that are some of the most important is, uh, uh, being authentic. So the, the, you know, if I say be authentic, um, there's, there's a lot of things that go into it. So auth authenticity means that, you know, what you think, what you say and what you do are all in congruence with each other. And so whenever you're able to have that, that that's whenever people will feel that that vibe of, of authenticity that I can trust this person, uh, that I could I could do business with this person, I could I could learn from this person. So authenticity is for me, it's one of the most important things that, that I live my life by that, um, that I think that has helped me reach to, to where I'm at today. And I think that'll it'll help me, you know, reach help me reach my potential. Uh, the second one uh, would be be curious because a lot of people today are, you know, fascinated with themselves. And I, you know, I, I think that uh, to talk about what we said earlier is that, you know, you need to master yourself, uh, but that's the internal game. But whenever you're dealing with others and interacting with others, you have to, you have to be curious. And so uh, be curious with uh, everyday things like no, you know, as, as a child would look at the earth and, and everything around it, you know, a child asks questions and, and a child wonders like, why, why is that? You know, why, why does it, why does something do this? And, you know, so being curious uh, about nature, being curious about your surroundings, being curious about people will help you step outside of your selfishness and you can focus on other people. So especially when I'm traveling, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm super curious about some, somebody's story uh, where they came from, you know, what, what can, you know, what can I learn from them? Because uh, no matter how smart you are or how much you learn, there, there's always something that you can learn from every, every person, you know, and just because someone isn't the most successful, you can still learn kindness from them. You can still learn all these other attributes that are, that are, that will make a meaningful life. So curiosity and I think authenticity, those, those two words, uh, can can drive you to to get what you want. Great stuff. I remember, um, was it Steve Jobs? He came up with the statement, stay hungry, stay foolish, all right? So you just nailed it right there because if you stay hungry for wanting to know more, then the universe is abundant with information. You would still, um, you know, be, you know, be in a position to learn and the more you learn, the more you grow. And if you stay foolish or, you know, you, 
they, you, you never think that you are a know-it-all because nobody in the world likes a know-it-all. Now, now that you are authentic and now that you, um, you know, you, you're curious about everything else around you, how then do you master yourself to know that which is, which is right or which is wrong or what are you supposed to be doing? Because I think with mastery now comes the passion to actually then live that authentic life. Now you did mention mastery. How can one instantly master themselves? Just like we've been doing with um, experimentation and with principles. Yeah, it's, it's building the foundation. You know, it's, uh, it's having these uh, certain, certain uh, pillars, so to speak, uh, to make sure that you have the right mindset, that your um, the connection between mind, body, and soul are incongruence. So um, understanding uh, what you want, because there's a lot of people that, that don't know what they want. Um, so sit down and figure out what, it, what is it that, what are the things that, that are important to you? What are the things that, that make you happy? And what are the things that will, will have a, help you have a fulfilled life? And I would, you know, in, in this like exercise, I would say, uh, stay away from, uh, money. Money is a tool to get you what you want, but the first thing you need to focus on is what is it that you want? So. And then, so there's, there's, yeah, you can make a lot of money and get that, or you, there's other paths that you can take to, to get to that end state. And so defining what, what you want and then uh, developing a plan on how you get there. And uh, yeah, it, take, it takes time for sure. It takes a lot of thought, uh, but the, the rewards for, for mastering yourself, uh, I mean, once, once those kind of things happen, uh, I think the final thing for, for mastering yourself is you have to trust, trust yourself. So once you put, up, put together all this knowledge, you put together you know, what it is that you want, well, now you have to trust yourself. You have to trust your, your beliefs. You have to trust your plan that you made. You have, you have to trust yourself and then go. And that's, you know, that's said simply, but... It's, it's definitely not that simple, but it's definitely worth it. Wow. Wow. I think whoever is watching right now is probably just twiddling their thumbs and they don't actually know what just happened to them because this is so much value. Thank you so much. Now, obviously, you're traveling and we just caught you before you went out on your surf or whatever it was you were going to do for the rest of the day. What's in store for, you know, uh, Lane in the next, say, five, 10, 15 years, what are we to expect? Uh, I'm going to experiment just like I talked about. And I've been, been doing that for the past uh, few years. Um, but cur currently right now, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to build an online community, increasefreedom.com. And it's basically about how to help other people reach their potential through travel and experimentation. And um, just finding out how you can know yourself and how that can lead to a fulfilling life. Oh, great stuff. Well, obviously you did mention if anybody wants to get a hold of you, they can um, um, catch you on increasefreedom.com, right? Yeah, increasefreedom.com. Wow, thank you so much. Man, Lane, thank you so much for your time. I think today we really, really learned quite a lot about how you can maximize your potential by mastering yourself and actually experimenting on the things that are around while you, um, you know, are positioning yourself as somebody that can be, do, and have a life that's profitable and enjoyable, all right? And it's all within yourself. It's all within how you want to connect and be curious with other people and how you can put it all together and trust that you are the person that can be that which you actually do want. Lane, I cannot thank you enough, my brother, for taking your time out of, um, you know, your laptop lifestyle. I thought that was only present in, um, in, in, in deceptive Facebook ads, but I see you're living the life there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, it's been a great, great little conversation. And uh, yeah, he's got this uh, personality and vibe that, man, just full of life. And I love it.
<laughs> you can say that again. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And I really hope you got a chance to actually learn that all you need is principles. All you need is to experiment with what you have. And all you really need is to master yourself. And once that's possible, trust that everything will all come together. All right. Lane, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Good stuff. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you do. Obviously, um, you will get to learn how you too can be, do, and have a life that's profitable and enjoyable. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You, my brother. You've done this before. Huh? It's, it's not the first time. <laughs> nah, this is, well, this is my second time doing something like this.